On the Aran island of Inishmoor, I wandered over some of the ancient religious sites with Michael McGlynn, the musical director of the choir Anuna. 150 years ago, um, the Irish famine ended, or at least the worst ravages of the famine. And the people must have been so brave and so strong to maintain a culture and a tradition and a society through such an appalling time. But what I think is most interesting as well is from a spiritual aspect that um, I think that is the reason that Catholicism has retained such a stronghold on the Irish psyche because Catholicism was there for people when there was nothing else. This is the church of Saint Enda. Saint Enda was an Irish chieftain who um, went to Rome, converted to Christianity, and then came back and set up the first monastery. You know, why an island? Why did he choose an island like this? We can only suppose that the people would have respected um, monks and hermits who came to areas which were isolated and lived in poverty and hardship. I think probably almost like the crucifixion where you'd have um, one person taking on the ills of the world mm -hmm. and, the, um, and the hardships so that they could then continue living and I think probably through their hardship receive some kind of salvation or, or spiritual release. The Aran Islands are known as the um, Aran of the Saints. There's supposed to be 120 saints buried actually in this graveyard somewhere. I think actually the most extraordinary aspect of such a tiny place in such an isolated area of the world is that it acted as a spiritual battery for the whole of Europe as these monks that trained here and subsequently like um, St. Columba who went on and founded other monasteries were responsible basically for the spread of Christianity of that period. Spirituality and nature is very much part of the way I feel about God, in that he's everywhere and all around. And this has come through in my writing, Foranuna, in that it almost acts as a channel. The focus is texts from the 5th, 6th century, and they focus the thought on nature, spirituality, Christ. And that passes through, and you can then get from Anuna what you want. We're now going to hear Cuddle Alinev, a lullaby for the Christ child. The song is a very strange song, it's a very old text and it tells the story of Mary holding the child in her arms um, entreating it to sleep but what is beautiful about it is that she equates that with the crucifixion so at the beginning he's a child but at the end he's been crucified and he's hanging from the cross. The basic love affair I have with Ireland uh, comes through in Onuna, in that it's, it's music which sounds soft and yielding, but 
I think if you if you listen to a lot of Anuna, you realise there is a very hard edge running through it because Ireland, while it is beautiful on a day like this, is a country which is racked with its own problems, both today and in the ancient past. Tell me about Anus Dei. The Anus Dei is a setting of the mass um, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. And I've set it in such a way that um, it begins gently and becomes more dramatic and fades away to nothing in that it has to contain the sense of peace at the end because the last line of course is grant us peace. <laughs> 